All right, I'm looking at page 330 right now where it says using intercepts to determine approximate solutions for one variable equations. Okay, so there are going to be several of these like in the homework, so let's just walk through these. It says when the amount in a bank account is less than the amount of the payment due, an automatic payment would overdraw the account. Um, uh, you probably guys don't have a checking account at this point, but what that means is if there's less money in the checking account than what they need to withdraw for the automatic payment, say, I don't know, maybe your electricity bill is, is set up on automatic payments, then that's going to overdraw the account. That means that you, you basically you're going to bounce a check um, even though the, you know it's an electronic debit. Um, or an electronic withdrawal. Okay, so the value of the account would be less than zero if the account is overdrawn. In discrete situations like the ones described, there's no actual point at which the value of the account would be zero um, because it would be more than zero until you get to the one withdrawal that puts it in the red or, or until you get that one withdrawal that makes it overdrawn. Okay, unless for some reason it just so happens to be like a perfect multiple, but that's not usually the case. Okay, um, you can use related continuous functions, however, to make an estimation of when the account would theoretically reach exactly zero. So we're going to do this. Um, it's kind of an applied situation using, remember, our two equations that we can um, use to figure out kind of when there's an intersection between those two lines and that is the solution to our equation. So Tara has $800 in a bank account and she uses it to make automatic payments of $101.51 for her monthly cable bill. So obviously you can see right away that you know it's not going to be a perfect eight months and then she has a zero balance because she's not debiting exactly $100 each month. So if, if Tara stops making deposits to that account, when would the automatic payments make the value of the account exactly zero? Well, just looking at this, just eyeballing it, um, if her payments were exactly $100, then it would take her exactly eight months to get down to a balance of zero. But her payments are just a little bit over $100, which to me says it's not going to take her quite eight months to reach a balance of zero. But we can go ahead and use some of the skills that we've been learning to figure out when it would be exactly zero. All right, so this is the function that describes the amount in the account after x, a certain amount, of automatic payments. The other function that we're going to use is g of x equals zero. Basically, um, y equals zero. That's not y'all's bell. That's just one that's in the background. All right, so basically y equals zero, that's an equation for the x-axis, okay? So that's one line, and the other line is the line created by this function. And I want to know where the two lines intersect. Remember, one of the lines is the x-axis. So I want to know when her balance is zero. If you think about this, and I, I know that this is the little image from the graphing calculator, but time is your x-axis. How much money she has in her account is the y-axis. So you want to know when the y-value equals zero, because that's going to be um, where the solution is. So when y equals zero, that's where those two things are intersecting. Okay, so we can do this a variety of ways, like we've been learning. We can use our graph and put the two equations in our graph, uh, in our graphing calculator. We can put the values in a table. We can set the two equations equal to one another. If f of x is equal to 800 minus 101.51x um, and set it equal to the other equation, remember we set them equal to each other so we can solve, basically what we're doing is we're setting this equal to zero, okay? Because if all of those things are equal, 
then that means this is equal to 0 also. And then you can just solve for x. Okay. All right, we're going to go through it on the calculator also to kind of continue developing our sort of calculator skills. Okay, so go to your calculator and turn it on. We're going to go to y equals. Um, let's clear that out. Clear, clear. Okay. Um, our two equations are this one, 800 minus 101.51x. And our second equation is just y equals 0. Now I'm going to change my window settings. Um, my window settings, I know that I don't have any x values lower than 0, so my minimum x value is going to be 0. I'll just put, because um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out of money before 10 months, I'll just put my maximum x value at 10. She's starting with $800 and then she's decreasing that amount. So, um, and I want to know when the bank actually gets down to $0. My Y minimum, I'm actually going to put in a negative 100, even though that's less than the minimum value I'm going to need. And I'll show you why in just a minute. My maximum value is 800. And then I am going to just hit graph. Okay, remember y equals 0 lies along this x-axis. And then here is the line created by 800 minus 101.51x. Okay, if I hit the trace button, the reason why I wanted to make my y minimum a little bit less um, I put a, I think I put a negative 100, is honestly so that when all of this stuff shows up, it's not running over my line where I'm trying to see where they intersect. Okay, so I'm just going to run this over here. So I hit the trace, and now I'm kind of running it along. Um, and you can zoom in if you want to. Let's zoom in. And I figured out that even though you might not move it to exactly the right spot, when you go to second trace so that you have that calculate, let's go to the intersection, hit enter. First curve, sure. And I can tell that I'm not exactly on it. I really need to be kind of over here. But I'm just going to show you, even if I'm not guessing all that well, Second curve, take a guess, sure, and I hit enter. It's going to tell me exactly where that intersection is. So when y is equal to 0, that happens 7.88 months after she starts um, paying automatically without putting any more money in. So this is actually the solution to our, our equation. Um, down here, they rounded it off just a little bit, and they called it 7.9, which is fine. Um, I could have found the 7.88 by solving this equation for x, 800 minus 101.51x equals 0. So solving for x would have given me the same thing here, okay? Which is the amount of time it takes for the balance in her account to be 0.